All right. Hey, artists. Happy Monday. I hope you guys all had a great weekend. I hope everybody uh, who got the vaccine is feeling all right. Um, let me know how that went for you guys if you did get the shot last week. Uh, I'm going to run through you guys real quick with our packets for this week, and then I want to show you a few videos before we do our bell work. So for this packet, um, it's going to be weeks seven and eight. This is going to be a two-week packet. And you are going to be designing the cover of either a manga or comic book. So you can choose to model it after a manga, like a Japanese manga, or you can choose to copy, uh, uh, model it after a comic cover, sort of uh, Western styled, you know, DC, Marvel sort of situation. Um, as always, remember that the best way to turn in your work is digitally. Uh, you can send your work to me in Remind text or email. Um, my number is in every packet. Your Remind links are in every packet. And um, if you can't get access to me online to submit your work, then you are able to drop it off at the school. But just know we are trying to limit uh, any kind of cross-contamination with COVID as much as possible. So if you are able to submit your work online, that is the best thing to do. So we are going to run through this packet, I wanna show you guys kind of what you have. There is this reading uh, available, it's called Comics Manga and their place in the artistic world. It's gonna give you guys just a brief history of sort of what to, ex uh, a, a brief history of comics and of manga. Um, so the this is sort of the brief history of manga, where it came from. And then the next one is gonna be a brief history of comics, it's gonna talk about the different ages, such as the Victorian age and the golden age and the atomic age, um, all these different times in our history of when we introduced different types of comics and where they sort of got their start to where they ended up now. Uh, and then we're gonna jump right into your guys's project for this week. Um, so for this project, you guys are gonna be doing two parts. It's gonna be your initial sketch, which is basically your rough draft. Every student will be putting it on uh, a paper that you have down here. It will say draft and it'll say initial sketch. All students are planning on this page. This is worth 10 points. I wanna see your guys' pre-planning thoughts. Um, whatever you're planning to do for your final project can be drawn on this page. Inside of your packets is also some notes on how to complete your covers. Um, I want you guys to really focus on line quality, make it clean and sharp for your final cover. Your line should be smooth and have different variations. So start. some of them should be sort of thick, some of them should be kind of thin, have good line quality. Um, your covers need to have a title. Uh, so make sure you include that and they should be colored. Even if you're doing black and white, I need to see um, finalized pieces. So if it's a monochrome piece uh, and you're doing just black and white, it needs to be completed and not just shaded in with pencil. Uh, there are some notes on sort of how to you can how you can create your cover, so you can go ahead and look at those. Um, just some step by steps, and then for your final project, drawing students can complete it on this paper or another sheet of paper if you choose not to use this one. Painting students will need to be painting on painting paper for your final cover. It does need to be painted. Remember guys, if you are doing uh, your projects in the wrong medium for your class, then points will be deducted. Um, go ahead and just make sure you guys read the notes, read the stories. Uh, it's pretty interesting if you're into comics and manga. Um, so I hope you guys have fun creating this project, uh, a good idea is consider using the original characters you created in our project from last week. Um, if you wanna, you can choose to recreate a cover that already exists, but if you wanna create a new one, that's a really fun way to go is to use your original characters and, and something that you created. And even last semester, I had some students use current events such as the election and even the coronavirus as uh, sort of ideas for their comic covers. All right, so now I kind of want to jump in and I just want to show you guys a couple of videos. Um, we're going to go ahead and 
view these few here. I want to start with this one and it's just a, a quick video about why comics are important in sort of a school setting. You know, out of all of the visual storytelling media that are out there, film, animation, television, comics is really the only one that is not time bound. That's what I call permanent, which means that, you know, when you're watching a, a movie or when you're watching an animated uh, television series, the rate of information flow is actually determined by the creator uh, of the content. It's not determined by the viewer. You know, you could slow it down. You could, you can go, you can go slow mo, but it's not the same experience. Comics, on the other hand, um, with comics, the rate of information flow is firmly in the control of the reader. And for certain students and certain kinds of information, that that aspect of comics, that control, makes for a very powerful educational tool. Uh, in, a, in an Algebra 2 class that I taught, um, I, um, when, whenever I was absent, I, I would um, create these comics lessons for my students. And that was some of the feedback that I got from them, is that you know, with these comics lessons, it was visual, unlike their math textbooks. But then on top of that, the students themselves can control how quickly or slowly they read through that lecture, unlike when I was lecturing in person. right? When I'm lecturing in person, I decide how fast or slow I speak. But when they're reading it uh, in, in the form of a comic, uh, if they didn't understand a, pack, pack, uh, a passage within that comic, they could reread it as, as quickly or as slowly as they needed to. In the past, I think parents and teachers had almost a hierarchy of reading. They saw picture books as almost a lower form of reading than pure prose novels. And comic books, which is my area of expertise, were either left out of the equation altogether, or they were seen as like this, this, um, this middle point, this, this stepping stone between picture books and, uh, and prose, prose books. And if you were a good enough student, you wouldn't need that stepping stone. Things are changing now. I, I think more and more uh, parents and teachers are realizing that pictures are, can be a very sophisticated way of communicating information. Back in the olden days, uh, if you look at comics, often the picture was there to, to, to basically present what the words were already conveying. You know, so you would have a caption that says, Superman punches Lex Luthor. And then in the, in the picture, it would just show you Superman punching Lex Luthor, right? And, and, and I think that contributed to this idea that um, comics were meant for the mentally deficient. If you weren't smart enough to get the meaning of those words, then you could at least read the picture. Nowadays, though, I think if you look at the, the top comic book writers, the top comic book creators, the relationship between the words and the pictures is much more complex. Often, um, they will pass narrative responsibility back and forth. So uh, in certain parts uh, of a comic or graphic novel, the words will convey what the most important information is in that story. And then in the next passage, it'll get passed to the pictures. And, and uh, in, in the hands of a skilled creator, um, each of those forms, each of those forms of communication, the picture and the words will be leveraged for what they're best at. There are other comics where the words and the pictures are actually contradicting each other. They might even be telling two different stories, describing two different realities, and they ask you as the reader to decide which one is true. Um, I, I really think that to engage um, today's audience, today's audience has, has grown up on stories. Every single one of us has probably consumed thousands and thousands and thousands of stories within our lifetime. In order to engage an audience as sophisticated as that, you need to have a sophisticated dynamic between words and pictures. All right. So that was just kind of a quick run through of why uh, comics are so important to sort of our educational understanding and helping students, especially visual learners, um, I'm going to quickly jump in. We're going to look at a, a brief history of comic books, uh, Western styled comic books, such as Marvel and DC, things that you guys might be more familiar with. They are the handheld take anywhere books filled with superheroes, classic stories or adult dramas. Some of them originally sold for only 10 cents, but now go for millions. With stunning artwork and legendary storytelling, their pages have captivated readers for over 80 years. This is the history of comic books. You 
using images to communicate goes back to the 32nd century BC when Egyptians devised hieroglyphs with over a thousand images representing ideas. In the same way, tapestries told stories through scenes depicted on the lush textiles in medieval European times. Mass production of paper allowed for the next medium of sequential art to emerge. While printed forms of picture-based stories appeared in Europe prior, the first American example of a comic strip came in the form of The Yellow Kid. The kid's creator, Richard Outcult, infused the comic with political and social commentary. Due to the popularity of The Yellow Kid, other comic strips soon appeared. In 1933, Famous Funnies collected some of the serialized newspaper strips into a book format. Although this collection included reprintings, many historians have deemed this publication as the first comic book. In 1938, the golden age of comic books began with Action Comics number one. This first appearance of Superman ushered in the cape and cowl popularity of the superhero. The Golden Age would give birth to many of today's beloved heroes, including Batman, Wonder Woman, Green Lantern, Captain America, and Captain Marvel. Many of the heroes grew so popular that they became symbolic elements in the war effort in World War II, and comic covers often depicted heroes beating up Hitler. Not all comics featured heroes, though. Many of the horror comics, such as EC's Vault of Horror, drew in readers who wanted their comics more dark and macabre. The taboo-breaking storylines and shocking artwork garnered too much attention. Psychiatrist Frederick Wortham filed a study called Seduction of the Innocent, where he claimed comic books to be a source corrupting the youthful readers. A Senate subcommittee investigated, and the comic industry self-imposed a set of codes and laws to keep comics upbeat and morally positive. In 1956, Showcase Number 4 introduced the world to a new version of a DC comic favorite, The Flash. Thus, the Silver Age of comics began. During this time, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby at Marvel Comics would create some of the most beloved heroes, including Spider-Man, the Fantastic Four, and the Incredible Hulk. By the 1970s, the counterculture popularity no longer wanted clean-cut heroes. An underground movement of comics rose, and artists like R. Crumb published adult-themed comics in small presses. Since the use of the comics code was optional, the underground movement needed no permission, and they had no limitations on their subject matters. By the 1980s, the modern era of comics saw the big two publishers going head-to-head, -head, Marvel and DC. While they battled for top billing, their characters appeared on television prime time in Saturday morning cartoons. In smaller presses like Pacific, Eclipse, and Fantagraphics slowly entered into the market. The graphic novel also rose in popularity during the 80s. These longer works sometimes were printed comic story arcs, but many featured original, unseen material. This longer form allowed for more in-depth storytelling and the dramatic content often won literary awards. When the 1990s hit, the comic book artists grew in celebrity status. Their popularity allowed them something hardly seen in the industry, a split from the big two publishers. Todd McFarlane, Jim Lee, Rob Liefeld, and Jim Valentino formed their own company, Image, and rocked the comic book world. Events like the death of Superman brought comics into the public eye like never before. With the comic codes an outdated form of censorship, publishers abandoned its use. As digital readers became more prevalent, the comic book took new shape in digital form. With comic book characters so identifiable, so many of the comic books we read are made into film. Popular shows like The Walking Dead also use comic books as their source material. And so there's no question that the comic book industry entered a new high point in its history. So the next time you grab your favorite issue or graphic novel, appreciate how far comic books have come since the concept of sequential art began back in ancient Egypt. 
All right, guys. And then our last video is going to be this one real quick. It's uh, just a Mongapedia. She's going to kind of talk about just the, the basics of what manga is. Hey, Previews World, and welcome to the Mongapedia, an ongoing exploration of the world of manga. Now, before you get intimidated, let me just say that this video series is for manga scholars, casual fans, and those new to the Japanese style of comics. Plus, if you stick around until the end, you could win a manga bundle on us because we want you to start reading. But first, let's get this out of the way right now. It's pronounced manga. Manga is the Japanese word for all comics. Now, to the untrained eye, you might think all manga and anime looks the same, big eyes and small mouths. But come on, guys, of course that's not true. Art styles vary widely across different series and genres. Check out the differences between JoJo's Bizarre Adventure versus Princess Jellyfish versus Polar Bear Love versus Crying Freeman. Just like comics the world over, the graphic design for any particular manga is tailored to suit the taste of the book's targeted audience. So for a more kiddie style for children, goofy art for comedies, gritty art for action dramas, etc. With that squared away, we got to talk about the one thing that confuses people the most about manga, the right to left thing. If you're new to manga, then you'll probably make the mistake of reading it backwards. Here in the US, comics are read from left to right. In Japan, however, comics are read right to left. Why right to left? The Japanese language is written starting from the right and moving left across the page. To maintain the integrity of the story, stories translated for Western audiences are presented in their original Japanese direction. If not, it would break the flow of the art, throw off sound effects, and splash pages would make no sense. Lastly, here's the cool thing about manga. You get a lot of story for the money you spent. U.S. comics have single issues, European comics have albums, and Japanese comics, they have bound volumes called tankoban. You would say that as tankoban. These are basically collections featuring several chapters, let's say single issues, in one. Most manga chapters were originally published one at a time in anthologies like Shonen Jump. Think of them like ongoing comic strips in the newspaper. Those comic chapters are then collected into a tankoban volume, or three, or forever. It really depends on how long the series originally ran. Regardless, the point of this is to make it simple for a new reader to start from the beginning and follow any series volume by volume to its conclusion. Also, I should point out that the manga stories that get collected into Tankoban were voted on by the Japanese reading public. Basically, it was so good that audiences reading the chapters in the anthology magazine demanded the series be published altogether, just so it could be read straight through. That's a seal of approval. So there's your crash course on the world of Japanese comics. And now it's... All right. So, Doug, like I said, just a, a real quick video kind of talking about what it is for anybody who might not be familiar with it. Um, I think from what I've seen so far, a lot of you are, but I just wanted to sort of run through that with, with anybody who might not be used to reading it. Um, I also want to make a quick correction on your guys' packet. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go down to your um, project outline, and I noticed that I made a mistake on your due date. This is a two-week packet. And it actually puts your guys' due date as Wednesday, March 3rd. And that is incorrect. So you guys can go ahead and um, mark that out. And your packet is actually going to be due on March. Uh, it's actually going to be due on March 10th. So, oops. You guys can go ahead and make that correction in your packets. Is the actual due date. Um, I'm still accepting all of your guys' other work. We're just trying to stick to a timeline so that we can try to have everything in um, before it gets too late into the semester and you get too far behind. All right, so moving on, we are gonna go ahead and look at our bell work for week seven. Um, let me close this one out. Here we are. Okay, so for your week seven bell work, I wanna know, do you or have you ever read manga? Or have you ever read Western comics such as the Marvel or DC comics? If you guys have, I want you to tell me some of your favorites and why those ones caught your attention more than maybe other ones did. If you haven't ever read manga or comics, 
tell me why and would you maybe consider it? Um, and if not, what do you prefer to read? Are you more into novels or chapter books or poetry or is there just something you prefer to read other than manga or comics? And if you prefer to read that, what draws you to that more than it would draw the comics or the manga? All right, guys. Well, that's all we have for the lesson for this week. Um, if you have any questions about your project, past or present, uh, go ahead and reach out to me and I will try to help as much as I can. Okay. I hope you guys have a great week and go ahead and do your best and have fun with this project.